He's back in a tough run in 2021, losing in the section semis to their arch rivals from Alexandria, who's got a D1 player of their own. Uh, our next guest was literally the first commit for the class of 2022. He's been committed for six months and finally was able to put pen to paper today. It's our pleasure to welcome on Moorhead linebacker Austin Altlapeter, who joins us this morning. Great to see you, man. Congratulations. Just tell me, I mentioned you've been waiting for six months. What was today like? Yeah, thanks for having me on. But uh, today was an awesome experience. You know, I got to sign with my two close friends from all this and and Jack Pike, who actually signed at our travel schools, but uh, <laughs> and that happened But now, yeah, like you said, I've been waiting a long time for this moment, and uh, uh, I knew it right away. Right, I hope it's committed now. That's the state of the so. Austin, describe even going back before the mm -hmm. 2020 season, which was so weird because you guys started practice and then had to stop and then started again. But with those guys, and you've known Jamal and, and Jack forever. I mean, how much did you guys feed off of one another that say, we're going to do this together and we're going to go play Division One football? Yeah, you know, we, um, we always talked about, sometimes joked about, you know, all this lifting, but um, when when this all came about, when we all had certain offers, you know, it was pretty surreal. And uh, we, we kind of just motivated each other uh, in the weight room. You know, it's just, it's just close friends, all three of us. So it's been amazing having people like them, you know, great people like them to, to as an experience all of so. Austin, when do you think this surge of Division One athletes started in Morgan with your particular class and you have a couple guys older than you? Was it junior high? Was it elementary? What did you kind of think, okay, let's let, let's let's get together and, and make this work and, and see how good we could be as a team? Yeah, uh, it, was, it would probably be like, uh, man, eighth grade or freshman year, you know, I saw, I saw some standouts because, um, you know, Otis, Otis Wedge, Jamal was a good brother. That's some of came before us. And I remember always going to the games, watching him play, you know, and uh, trying to get a picture with him. Cool. He, uh, he, he played around for, at least for, for what I see. Uh, and then uh, us, us three, you know, Jamal, I uh, we kind of just saw that. We were just inspired. So uh, we tried to try to do our best to um, I remember early on when the recruiting period opened up, you were getting letters from everybody. You got one from Notre Dame. And I remember talking about that. What was that like when you're starting to get, you might get hurt from the local schools, but you get one like that. And what, how, how eye opening was that? Yeah, uh, Coach Vinny sent me an email and it was just forwarded to Notre Dame. And I was like, that's, that's my name, is that? <laughs> you know, and then I got uh, some mail, quite a bit of mail from them actually. But, um, yeah, it was it was pretty surreal to be honest. I I didn't know a school like that would be reaching out to me, but it was it was really motivating. So, exciting. I know you had a tough end of the season for people that don't know you. Tore your ACL in the last game of the season. Describe, I guess, the frustration with that and where you're at now in the rehab process. Yeah, uh, at the time it was it was pretty sad. And, you know, uh, last game losing to our rival school, tearing ACL, stuff like that. But um, I'm going to be stronger through it all, you know, right now. So far, I'm doing really good through uh, the recovery process. And um, I'm just looking forward to getting in the field with guys. Um, yeah. What's NDSU telling you as far as support? I mean, I, I've heard in, in some horror stories in the recruiting circles where somebody hurts their ACL and then offer a pull by some FBS or whatever. Obviously, it didn't yeah. happen here. That, right. Um, I, I heard the same stories as you. Uh, yeah, I was pretty. I was pretty nervous for the call. You know, and this is never something where I tell a coach you said they're committed to. Um, but they they took it. They took it very well from my side. So um, they're you know they're still with me. I'm still committed. They're they're excited to have me. They're excited to be there. That's a good. That's a good point, Colback. You hear those are there's there are more of those stories than people know out there uh, on that. I gotta ask, just having this done. You mentioned we. Uh, Good friend of yours, Nate Staley, who played at Brainerd, obviously going to play the same spot as you at linebacker. How excited are you about that? Knowing how that spot is treated at North Dakota State to go in and play that spot in college. Right. Uh, yeah, me and Nathan, Nathaniel, we've been texting back and forth. You know, uh, he's one of my closer guys uh, committed right now. So, um, yeah, being able to just play alongside with him and learn from each other, learn from other guys, you know, linebacker, the linebacker core at NBC is always been very strong, and we hope to you know, do the same when we get there as the people. So. What's it say about the talent level 
Austin of the state of Minnesota when seven guys are playing in the All Star game, yeah. and he, he unfortunately he would have been eight. He would have been eight. eight. Number eight. There's no doubt in my mind. What's to say about that? Uh, you know, the coaches at NDSC do a great job recruiting, and uh, just great job coaching. So that's why they're winning games. So that's why people are attracted to that school and uh, the culture there, and the, the people that they have there is amazing. So, uh, without a doubt, it's, you know, um, we, you know, eight, seven, eight guys in the All Star game, seven, eight guys. That's that's amazing. So it just reflects on how good the program is, I guess, and how how good job, how good of a job they do. Austin, what did it mean to you to be the first kid in this class, and what type of uh, leadership role did you take uh, <laughs> because of that? Right. Um, when I committed, uh, I was talking to Daniel at the time. He committed, you know, right after me. So I was texting him, you should commit now, because he was, you know, he was talking about me like that. So I was kind of just like, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I committed first. And, uh, you know, coaches were telling me about all the, all the great guys that committed first in their class. For me, like uh, Trey Lance is one of them. Yep. Uh, some other guys, big name guys, but um, just being able to, you know, commit first and and get that over with. That's something awesome. I think through my eyes, and um, I'm just ready to get out there and play. All right, you got you got to tell me what was the trash talk like in practice with Tykin <laughs> and Dixon, knowing they're going to UND. What did, did that start early on? It did. Yeah, as soon as I committed, Tykin committed. You know, we were. For weighing on Jamal, you know, we both got fired at it, but uh, it's like he got, I guess Tyke did a bit of job, I don't know, but um, yeah, it was, it was, it's off, awesome memories with those guys in practice, and even at school, we see, we'll see each other in the hallways, go back to pass, and, you know, they're going to be a little, like, a bad, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny, though. I mean, awesome. fast forward, what do you think that's going to be like when you guys are playing against one another in college? I mean, that's going to, what, what do you right. think that experience going to be like? Yeah, I have, I have no idea. Um, you know, they've, they've already got so many guys from more at the end year now, right. so I'll see them more of them. But, um, no, I mean, I'm excited. It'll, it'll, be a, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. So far. Before I let you go, I know Jeff wrote about this in his book, but how special your 2020 team was. What do you think you guys could have done playing on the, if, you, if you could have been allowed to keep playing? Who do you, I mean, if you guys could have won the whole thing on the field, I would imagine. You, to describe that and have that, that season not being able to continue, nobody would have touched them. Yeah. Right. So um, I agree with you. Our team, our team was doing amazing. Uh, what, what, what comes to my mind with that season is how, um, if we would have got to the dome, you know, the weather wouldn't be a, it would be a factor with our, our pro style offense, mm-hmm. both tricks, bring it back to, um, it just make us even more hard to stop. So uh, I think we would have made it very far. Uh, I don't know. People say the same, but I think we would have won it all. So. You thinking of uh, a picking off a Trey Feeney pass then here in a college game in a couple of years? Have you thought about that? <laughs> I know we, yeah, I've thought about that for sure. But, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's great to see you. Thanks so much for doing this. Good luck with the rehab and congratulations, okay? Thank you. Go back. Austin also Peter joining us. The first commitment class of 2022. I think you bring up a great point on uh, asking him about that because automatically that. That because Jackson Dupacker was the same way a couple of years ago when he was the first guy, actually last year from Mandan. That whether you like yeah. it or not, that, that mantle comes on you and that's there for the rest of the time. Yeah, they just seem like alpha male leaders. Um, I think the alpha, staff promotes it to you want to be first and you take that leadership role. I mean, every year we talk about Trey, the same thing. Trey was what that yeah. guy. They always talk oh. about these yeah. 